Hey, what's up everyone? So today you're going to spend the day with us. We're going to Strathmore University for a talk where we're going to talk to them about how you can take trading as a career, not just as a hobby, treat it as a profession, something you can live off by. So I want to record this video, you're going to spend the day with us. We are still at the office, now it's around, it's 12 p.m. I think the event starts at 2 p.m. So I'm very, very looking forward to seeing much of you people and have a good bunt and talk with you guys and discuss. Apart from that, we're here in the office. You can see the teammates, everyone is here, everyone is seated. The speakers for today, we have Taras and Ken who are going to talk. You can see Ken is in a sharp, uh, look, look, look. <laughs> Yeah, good time, but anyway, we're going to have a good time, so come spend the day with us, uh, and I hope you enjoyed this video, so I'll see you later on. Okay, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is um, Ian Kenyo. I'm a student at Strathmore University. And today we have a great team uh, invited by the professor. And we have a great team here that has proven that Forex can work. Forex is profitable and in the long run, if we follow the steps and the guides they give us today, I believe that we can achieve much. And with that, moving forward, I would like to also invite one of them to give us a brief about who they are, what they do, and what they have in store for us today. And so with that, I'd like to invite Caleb from the Financial Hub Academy. Let's applaud him. Hey, what's up everyone? Um, thank you for this opportunity. Um, a good number of you have, uh, have come and we are really grateful for that. So uh, my name is Caleb, as Iana said. I'll introduce the team, what we do, our journey, how it's been in Forex. Then my partner Ken will come and talk about the technical part of what we exactly do and how you can take this as a career, what you're seeing Forex trading as a career. Then my partner Taras will come and end towards the end. Is that fine? So everyone feel at home, feel comfortable. We'll do Q&As later on, but feel relaxed, okay? So we all take risks in life, especially crazy. We do crazy things in life, especially when we're teenagers. Right? Right? Yes. When we're teenagers, everyone does. If you, if you decide to think about anything you did when you were a teenager, there's something crazy most of you did, okay? When I was in Form 2, I think I was about 16 years old, I sat my parents down, my mom and dad. I came, sat them down, and told them, Mom, Dad, I'm leaving school. Okay? So this all shock. My mom was surprised, my dad was surprised, because I literally sat them down told them, I don't want to study what I'm doing. I've been studying things like chemistry, no offense to chemistry and all that, but it wasn't making sense to me. I wanted to go do film. What Douglas is doing on the cameras, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to Hollywood and make movies, okay? So it didn't make sense while I was studying film. I mean, it didn't make sense while I was studying chemistry, Kiswahili, those things were a bit tough for me. So when I sat down my parents and I told my mom that, okay, so my mom was furious. Like, when I was telling her mom, you know, I want to leave school, as I kept talking and talking and talking, you could see the anger in her face. It was building up a lot, you know? How many people can relate to that? You have mothers? Anyone can relate? If you sit, imagine you sit your mom down and tell your mom, mom, I'm leaving school, okay? How many people can relate to that? She'll be very, very furious. A good number of people. On the other hand, my dad was very chilled. He was very relaxed, didn't have any, he, he, he kept his composure. Like, he, he was very chilled, didn't have any problems. Like, I was just talking and talking and talking. But when I finished talking, the first thing he said was, Caleb, 
you are not going to leave school. You're going to go back to school and finish your education. Okay? Now, if you're from a African, a true African home, you all know if your dad says those words and finishes and silence, what does that mean? Your dad says those words, finishes, silence. What does that mean? Case closed. Okay? Nothing else. You can't continue. You can't say anything else. Now, that time my mom was relaxed a bit now. At least you could see the anger coming out of her. Okay? So, two years down the line, I'm proud to say that I finished high school and joined university, okay? So I finished high school, I struggled a bit, it wasn't my thing, but here we are, I finished and joined university. And I went to Technical University of Kenya, known as Tuk, and that's where I met my good friend, and later on, we didn't know, but he was to become my business partner in uh, Financial Hub, what we are doing here, um, Ken. I don't know if fate willed it, or it was the master plan, but that's why we met, and that's why we became friends, okay? But during my time there, I was like, okay, I didn't want to do school. Now I'm doing engineering. I was like, okay, this is not my thing. So what did I do again? Went back home. Sat my mom, dad, my mom and dad down again. Told them, I want to, I want to, let's quit school. So I went the second time. I told my mom, dad, you know what? I want to quit school. But this time, I'd learned from my mistakes. So lesson number one, always learn from your mistakes, okay? The first time, the mistake was who? My mom. So the second time was like, I'm not going to wait for my mom to be there to tell them I want to drop out. So I waited for my mom to travel, sat down with my dad, had a man-to-man -man talk, okay? And I could tell him, dad, you know, I'm not feeling this, I want to study this. And he was like, okay, do you, want, do you know what you want to do? He was like, yes, I know what I want to do. Do you know which school you want to go to? Because the first time I wanted to go to New York. Now, this time was a bit humble. Okay, I told them there's a school here, it's called ADMI. Maybe most of you have heard about it. Africa Digital Media Institute. A really, really nice school. So I told them I want to go there, study film, and he was very good with it. So he agreed, and I dropped out of technical university, okay? At the same time, my partner Ken also didn't want to do what he was doing. So he dropped out and went to Kenyatta University where he met Taras, okay? So now I've dropped out, I'm studying ADMI. It was a diploma course, it's film. So this technical a bit, these film courses are mostly, they are not degrees that much. I think they're introducing them, but back then they were very new. That was back in 20. 2016. So when I got into ADMI, I stayed there for about a year, about a year, and then my cousin from the United States, not United, UK, she came to visit, and when she came, this is where my life changed completely, okay? She introduced me to Forex, and I don't know why, till today, I'm still trying to figure out why I really fell in love with the making money and all that. I just fell in love with it. I felt like it was my passion, like something was pulling me to come and do this. So I left ADMI again. I decided to drop out. Now, luckily this time, I met with Taras and Ken. Luckily, they were doing the same thing from wherever they were. They were introduced to it by a friend of ours back in KU, and they were doing the same thing. So when I called them, we linked up and we started doing this. We decided, let's do this as a career. So back, I went back home, sat down my parents again, and told them, I want to quit school. And I'm not saying this so that you people can do the same, okay? All I'm saying is lesson number two. Follow your heart, okay? That's where your treasure is. Follow your heart. Listen to what you really want. Don't let anyone put pressure on you. So I sat down, Taras and Ken, we all decided to drop out and start this as a career. Now that was back in 2016. Forex was very new, it was a very new industry. So many things were starting up. It wasn't yet regulated. It was regulated later on in 2017. And what we mean by regulation is, if you're not regulated in Kenya as a industry, if someone comes and takes your money, and this has been going on a lot, and it's something we're trying to stop. If someone comes and takes your money, tells you, I'm going to trade in Forex for you, make money and you can share the profit. Now, that sounds like a good idea. Someone will tell you you can make 100% in I don't know how many days or how many months. Very good idea. But if something bad happens, the money gets lost, the person disappears, if it's not regulated, you can't take them to court because there's no, um, there's no constitution to govern it, okay? Makes sense? So back then it was really new. You couldn't do anything about it. So over the years since 2016, when we decided to do this full time and take it as a career, what Ken is coming to tell you about, we've seen a lot of changes. We've seen the ups and downs, especially during such things like online stuff. When you start trading, um, anything you do online, it's very easy for the first few years, first 
you make money, lose money, make money, lose money. And that was sort of our trajectory. But we had this feeling that one way or another, this is going to be really big, okay? And right now, we are seeing a lot of changes coming. We've seen a lot of brokers coming into Kenya. By brokers, what I mean, these are people who allow us to be able to trade with international markets, okay, just in a nutshell. So we were able even to partner with a company called Paperstone, from the, they're from Australia. They process about nine to ten billion dollars of transactions. It's what, per, per day? Per day, so that's about 20 billion per month, I mean 200 billion per month, okay? So they transact that, so we were able to partner with them. On the other side, we were able to open our YouTube. We have a YouTube where we share free information. My partner, Taras, is going to tell you about it towards the end. But over that period, we've seen a lot of changes, and you people are in the right place, okay? Right now, the room can be like this. It's a very good number, but in future, this place will be full. Everyone will be wanting to take Forex trading as a career. Right now, they're really establishing it into the market, into schools. We so the other day, um, city, not, the government allowed, um, what was it, the, the coding. They've allowed coding into the syllabus. I think uh, Kenya is the first country in Africa to allow that. But sooner or later, we were speculating and talking about investments is going to be the next big thing. Because investment is as important as coding right now, okay? If you're able to code and make money, how can you invest that money and make more? Okay, so far so good, we're together. Okay, so that's basically an introduction, how we got into trading. Right now, we have our offices. We're able to open offices back in 2020. We're located in Jayqua Towers. Very good view. Um, last month, or actually earlier this month, we're able to open our first trading floor. I think it's a one of a kind in Kenya, okay? And we're still growing. The team's growing. I'm here with the whole team. I'm here with Taras, here with Ken, and my boys right over here. We left someone in the office, and Douglas also behind the camera. So we're all here as a team, and we're here to spend time with you guys. Towards the end, please ask me any questions. I'm here to, let's converse, let's be interactive, where I can help you and where you can help me, we can help one another, okay? But before I end, I'd like to end with a quote which I'd really want you guys to think about it, okay? I wouldn't want any answer from you, don't tell me anything, but just think about it. Maybe you've heard about it, maybe not, okay? So life is a just employer. He gives you anything you want. But once you set your wages, you must be ready to bear the task, okay? So if I'm able to repeat it, life is a just employer. He gives you what you want. But once you set your wages, you must be ready to bear the task. In a nutshell, what it means is life will give you anything you want of life. If you want to earn pennies, life will give you pennies. If you want to earn millions, you'll get millions. If you want billions, you'll get billions, okay? And this industry, as I said, we've talked about the transactions happening per day. It's a billion dollar industry. Per day, we normally process total worldwide in the forex industry about seven trillion dollars. That's about seven to eight trillion dollars every day. So what is our work? Our work is just to come in, take a bit of that money, and walk away, okay? That simple. Sounds so simple, but very complex. But that's what Ken is going to talk to you about. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for your time, and I'll leave the floor to Ken. How many have bought a coin, crypto, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, all those things? If you have ever bought, had, everyone has heard of Bitcoin here, right? but no one has bought Bitcoin, paid something in Bitcoin. Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you about that world. So in simple terms, we're going to talk about the financial markets. It's a broad, broad world. So many people think of it from Forex, many people just know Forex, but once you understand Forex, you understand the whole financial markets as an ecosystem. Because you have the crypto world, we have the Forex world, we have uh, the commodities world, we have stocks, we have indexes, we have so much in this world. There are so many opportunities in this world that I don't understand why not many people are pursuing them, but I have clear reasons why most people don't pursue them. And I'm going to ask you a simple question. How many think Forex is something like gambling, you can't make money on it, it's just something you do here or there, you use your phone, just make a decision or two, Make your 10, 20 dollars, today's on Friday. Actually on Friday having such a room in a university is not easy. I was joking with Caleb that if it was back when we were in Took, I can bet money that we wouldn't be among this group. <laughs> We'd be somewhere else doing some other things, but hopefully you guys will get something out of this talk. 
Again, I'll commend the ladies who are here. This is the first group I've spoken to where I think the ratio is almost 50-50. In all the groups I've spoken to, the ratio is almost 90, 10, 80, 20. So for the ladies around, congrats. We want more of you into this world. More of you should be coming uh, to talk about and to do trading as a career. So my talk is just, there are about nine slides here. The slides are just a guide. So if you try to read the slides, you may get lost. The slides are just a guide to what I'll be talking about. I'll talk to you about how you're going to approach trading as a career. So our mission, once we started trading, we realized that there was a lot of garbage information. Uh, we can just call it garbage, like a lot of skirmish things going on online. And we fell to some of them uh, when we were still green. And we decided with my partners that part of our mission is going to spread trading as a career. Because we believe the opportunities that exist in the market, if they can be approached in the right way, will change how this country functions, will change how people live and how people do things uh, around this place. So we decided that part of our mission will be showing people how they can approach trading as a career. Because like Caleb said, I don't think you make a decision to drop out of school if you're going to do it as a hobby. If it's a hobby, you can do it after classes, you can do it after work. But once you've made the decision to drop out, it's all in, you're all in. And for me, I'm looking for those people who can go all in. After doing trading for a couple of years, I don't think it's a very, very wise decision to try and do it part-time, like juggling two things. Uh, it doesn't end up very, very well. I've not seen people who've become extremely good at it uh, when they're juggling around two or three things. Uh, my hope would be you pursue it full-time, you go into it full-time, because I'm sure five, six, seven years down the line, you may look back and you may, you may be very happy and probably you won't regret that decision. But if you try and do it as a hobby, then it may not end up very, very well. So my talk will just give you steps that you can take if you want to approach trading as a career and as a business, because this is a business. Uh, the few steps that you can take, which I think are very, very important. But before we go into the steps, I'll first talk about the industry in general in Kenya. So I personally started trading in 2016. Late 2016 is when I personally started trading. We started it with my partner, Taras. By that time, Caleb has said he was in another world, I was in another world. And we started just by landing on someone and he told us, like the normal Kenyans always say, kuna pesa hava. When you're in campus and you're told there's money somewhere, you try and pursue it, right? Like, I'm sure even you guys, if you're told you can make money in something, you'll try your hand at it. So that's what we did. Uh, we started trading, but after reading one book, so you guys have a library here where you can get books. That's where we went. Took a book on trading, just read one book. And after we had done the book, we thought we really knew how to trade and we started trading with about $300. But very, very fast, we lost that money. Part of the reason we lost the money is because we had not done a very, very good job of developing ourselves. If we had done a good job of developing ourselves, developing our systems, then probably we wouldn't have lost money. And if we lost, we wouldn't have lost it as fast as we did, because we lost it in about three weeks. All the money we had was gone. So I'm going to talk to you about now how you can take the right steps to ensure you don't fall uh, to our mistakes. Because if you fall into our mistakes, then there's a high chance probably you may not continue. I've met many people who've tried trading once, and after the first blow up, they just decide, I'm not going to do this thing anymore. And if you're that kind, then probably the steps I'm going to share with you will take you through the journey. So like I was saying, I started trading in 2016. Uh, back then, there were very, very few people who knew what Forex is. But five years ago, there were very, very few people who actually knew even Forex existed. Because we'd meet people and we'd tell them we're doing trading and they'd wonder what, what, what sort of language is that, what, what's that. But upon our realization, there have been very many people just behind the scenes uh, who've been doing trading. We have a couple of friends now who have done it for more than 13 years, 15 years, 16 years. So these, these are people who actually started long time ago before I even joined school. But in Kenya, the majority of the people who are trading are youngins. Like they're between 25, I would say, let's say below 30, majority of the people are below 30, moving backwards. But the veterans, the people who have been doing it for long are 34, 35, moving forward. So when we started, there wasn't much. There was nowhere where we could learn in Kenya. We tried looking for places where we could get someone to guide us online. There was nothing. It was green. It was a green area, a gray area, I mean. So it was 
totally, totally gray. No one was actually even willing to say they're doing it. So what we decided to do is to just teach ourselves. Uh, so what we do is we'd look at books and try and understand what's happening. But over the years, like in 2017, August, we had the Forex regulations coming in. So if you look at the timelines, which are in the next slide, in 2017, we had the Forex regulations coming in from the CMA. And what that meant was it was now official that trading can be tackled as a career and as a business. And why were the regulations brought in? The regulations were brought in because there were very, very many people who are scamming people are using trading. So how are scams, or how do scams actually work up to today? So I'll approach you guys, I'll tell you I do trading, I'll show you a chart, I'll just show you things moving up and down, you guys will see them, you'll believe I'm a cool person because maybe most people have not actually seen them, so you'll think, hey, this guy must be cool. And I'll tell you, listen, if you put your money here, in 24 hours, 48 hours, we'll be having a 100% return. So I'll tell you, give me a $1,000, on Friday, you'll come, I'll give you $3,000. Once you hear someone saying that, turn and run away as fast as you can, because there's a high chance you lose everything. All the, all, all, even that person, you won't see him again. So there are very many people who are doing that. And what happened was the government realized Kenyans are losing a lot of money to people who are not competent enough in trading. And so they brought in the regulations. And so according to the regulations, for you to get a license to manage money publicly, then you need to prove certain things to the government and then they'll give you the license and then you'll be officially allowed now to manage money for the public. That means I can come in here, pull a thousand dollars from each of you, trade it, and then you guys will give me a cut, you guys will make your return. So now that was allowed. Once that was allowed, the three of us knew this is now, this is the pathway, this is what to follow. Because we believe in building up new things. If you keep on doing what is old, you may end up missing most of the trends and entrepreneurship is about pursuing the new trends. So we decided to pursue it. So in 2018, we had the first brokerage coming in. Uh, when we started out in 2017, for you to deposit your money, it was taking almost three weeks because you had to send your documents all the way to probably Australia, Cyprus, all these places. Yes, it was still online, but it would take a lot of time before your documents were brought back for you to officially start trading. Right now, we have about nine brokerage firms in Kenya. Majority of them are based in Westlands, I think. So they have their offices there. And when we talk to them, they always tell us, we think Forex in Africa is where Forex in Asia was like 10, 15 years ago. Because if you go back to the early 2000s, 2008, 2006, 2007, those times it was still starting out in Asia. So 13, 14 years later, it's starting out in Africa. And according to them, for the next 10, the next decade, we can say, trading is going to be a very, very big thing in Africa. I'm sure you guys, if, if you were told, if when Spotpesa came, told you, someone told you gambling will once become something that everyone will know about, and it will actually be regulated by the government, most people will say, no, that can't happen, no one can try their hand. But I can tell you for free, any business whereby there is the opportunity to make money and you don't need any credibility to just get in. People will official, People will just try their hand. And they'll try their hand because they've had someone is trying it, someone is making money out of it. So we do believe it's very, very important for you to follow the right steps if you're going to pursue it as, as a career. So currently trading is growing at about, COVID actually brought in a very, very huge spike. Because after COVID, most people were laid off, people were at home, were trying to think of what they can do to make money while still in the house. And we saw, like, from according to Google, we had like about 200% increase in the number of people who are searching about forex trading in Africa in general, uh, not just in Kenya. So currently, we are growing at about 20 to 30% rate. So that's the whole trading industry. And there are very many things that are going to happen with this growth that is coming in. There's infusion of capital. There's opportunities from the different side of the business. So there are very many things which are coming in to change a lot. So on my next slide. I want to talk about the career options. So many people in the, how many are taking a course in finance? Okay, how many in economics? Just one. Okay, so I don't know which are, become. Okay, all of you are in the same world. You guys are, one is, an, one is in finance, the other one is in economics, the other one is in become. If you're in BCom, maybe you're uh, in accounting or something. I don't know the branches, all of them. But I believe all of you will follow the line of finance. The economist will probably think about how the economy is doing, where it should be going, 
and certain options like that. The finance person may become a risk manager depending on what you specialize in. You may become a trader. Uh, you may bring in the concepts of finance into markets. You may become, there are very many different options. But now in trading, in the financial markets, there are basically different careers that you can pursue. You don't have to be the one taking risk in the market. If you're taking risk, you're the trader. You're the one who's putting in, I have a million dollars, I have to know how to position size it, how to allocate it to different things. But if, if you're just uh, getting started and you want to pursue different things, you just don't want to be the one sitting at the desk, then there are different options. One, there's an analyst. So what an analyst basically does is to analyze different markets. Your job is not to take risk, you're not, you're just going to analyze probably the economy, how the economy, like the one who's doing economics. You can analyze how the economy, and based on how the economy is doing, you can know how assets will perform. So let's say we are in an environment whereby we're going to have probably, let's say low interest rates, you can know stocks will go up. So based on your analysis, you can suggest probably buy this stock, buy this stock, so it can go up. But you're not the one making the decision to buy. Your job is to just analyze. If you look at companies like Bloomberg, how many have heard of Bloomberg? Yeah, in Bloomberg, there are very many analysts. Their job is to just analyze. They're working with a media firm, but a media firm that reports about finance. Now in Kenya, there are also research firms that just research about finance. All of them need an analyst. So that's a, an option that you can take, a, a path that you can take, and it will lead you to a very good place, probably. Then there's the brokerage side of the business. Uh, for me to take positions in the market, I need a brokerage account. And like Caleb was telling you, that's where uh, brands like Pepperstone come in. So once you have become good at trading, you just don't trade from your house without depositing your money to a broker. A broker is the middleman between you and the market. So he'll connect you uh, from where you are to the market. So it's very, very important for you to have a brokerage account. And that's also another side of the business. Like I've said right now, we have about nine brokerage firms. If those brokerage firms are hiring, they look for someone who understands trading, or someone who has at least tried their hand in trading. But if majority of the people have not uh, tried their hand in trading, then obviously the guy who understands markets is at a better position than the other guy. Then you have psychology. So a psychologist or a therapist or a life, uh, a life coach or a trading coach, trading psychologist. So trading is a bit mental. It's quite, quite tough. Losing money is not easy. If you've lost uh, money, a thousand bob, two thousand bob, you know it's not easy. Now imagine losing, let's say, a hundred thousand after you've done your research, you've sat down, put in the hours, you've done all your back work and you still lose a thousand dollars. Mentally, it's not something very, very easy. So there are people who've come in, uh, understood the psychology of how markets work, how people make decisions under uncertainty and risk, and they have come up with very, very uh, good techniques that we can use to manage our emotions, to pull them down. So once you lose, often you just, I need to look for a, a psychologist or a therapist and you talk to him about your losses. But if you have a therapist who doesn't understand markets, then there's a high chance you won't go anywhere. This is one of the fields which I think is going to be very, very big, but you're currently missing people who are doing it. I think the psychology space is missing a lot. The other sides, I can see some people coming in, but on the psychology side, I feel like people who are doing it are way, way behind. Then there is content creation and educating people about it. So there are very many green people who don't know anything about markets. It's very, very important for these people to be educated on the right way to do trading. So you can also follow that path of becoming a content creator and educating people on how to do it. And finally, the most important one is to become a trader or a money manager. So a trader or a money manager is someone who basically, like us, so like us, we are in the trading business. As much as in the education business, our main business is trading. Uh, so part of our day job is to look at markets and speculate where they are going. If, let's say, we are looking at gold and we think gold will go up, then we buy some gold. If we think stocks will go down, we sell some stocks. If we think Bitcoin is going up, we buy some Bitcoin. If we think, uh, let's say, a certain currency like GBP against the Japanese yen is going to a certain place, then we'll also speculate on it. So part of our job is to just analyze markets, come up with good trading decisions, and put some money behind those ideas. So you have to have some skin in the game. If you're just analyzing and you're not taking risks, you're an analyst. If you're analyzing and taking risks, then you become a trader. So from here now, I'm just going to focus on how you can become a trader and what you need to pay attention to for you to become a good trader. Because most of you, I believe, I'm not sure for the guys who have done it, how long they have done it, but I'm not sure how long have you guys done it, for the people who have done it, probably you. 
So about three, four years. Yeah, so it's quite, I, I'm sure most of you are between that time, if you've done it for long. If you've not done it for long, probably an year or two, or you've just tried it and then you've never looked at it again. So what are the steps you need to take for you to move forward? So how to get started? Obviously, the first thing you do is to seek knowledge, right? If you don't know anything, if you, if, if you wanted to become a driver, you go to a driving school. If you want to become a doctor, you go to medicine school. If you want to become, like he was doing video production, you go to film school. I don't understand why people who want to become traders don't want to go to school. <laughs> I just don't understand it. Because <laughs> all the other professions, you go to school, right? Including cooking, you're taught. So you need some knowledge. If you don't, you can educate yourself. I'm not saying you cannot educate yourself. And in fact, I do believe educating yourself is the best part. But what I find out after telling people that is you will waste a lot of time. So a better thing is for you to get some guidance on what to educate yourself on. You get? Because it's, it's, it's a big world. Imagine you're trying to learn Forex, but you're in Bitcoin. Or you're trying to learn about Bitcoin, but you're in trading. Those two worlds work very, very differently. As, as much as they're under one umbrella, the mechanics of the market and how they work is quite, quite different in both, both spaces, you get? So you need to seek knowledge, and the knowledge you need to seek will just be around three main areas. So if you go to the next slide, the next slide has the three main areas where you need to focus on. So there are three main steps to becoming a good trader, just three. Those three are what you'll spend probably three to five years just doing. The first one is to develop a trading system. So anyone who thinks trading is about speculating about what the future will be, or it's about uh, guessing where the market will move, that's not really what trading is. Trading is about doing research to develop a method that works, okay? So you need to sit down and do research, and that's why you'll spend majority of your time. You'll spend majority of your time doing research to understand which patterns which system will work. You can choose different parts. The guy who's doing economic can follow that path. If you're doing economics, you can decide, listen, for me to make speculation decisions or for me to make asset prices decision, I'll use economics. So what that means is you'll spend your time trying to understand how the economy is growing and how that will affect different companies and how you need to be positioned based on that effect of how the economy will grow, right? But for us, we focus on technical analysis. So what technical analysis is basically looking at charts. So we look at prices of different assets and we try to identify a pattern that keeps on repeating and repeating and repeating and has a statistical advantage. Those keywords are very, very important. Patterns which keep on repeating and have statistical advantages. Okay? Majority of the people who are trading, I can assure you, 99.9% .9 have, are trading a pattern which they have not tested to see if they, it has a statistical edge. So you just came in online, searched for patterns, you'll find double tops, you'll find double bottoms. Those are just technical terms, but they are just patterns, different patterns, and you'll start trading them. That's wrong. What you should first do is if you find out a pattern, go back and do your back work. Because what this developing a system allows you to do, like this one is just a chart, a sample. What this allows you to do is to quantify the behavior of the market. You get? So you need to understand, if I see a certain pattern, then it means the market is behaving in a certain way, or the market is supposed to behave in a certain way. If you have not developed a system which will allow you to understand when to be in the market, when to be out of the market, how long to stay in the market, what size to put in, because if let's say I have $10,000, and this is a trade that has just come along, if I take that trade, I may decide to bet my whole $10,000, I may decide to bet $1,000, I may decide to put in $100. It just depends on my risk profile, my risk appetite, and my risk management strategy, because I need to manage the risk that is in the market, right? So most of these patterns, most of these edges will have between a 60, let's say 50 to about 65% hit rate, meaning if you identify a pattern, and if that pattern you keep on how will I explain it? Let's say if I keep on, if you play a coin toss, right? There's heads, there's tails. So someone may say I'm tails, the other one may be heads. If I just toss it 10 times, there's a high chance it will land five times on heads, five times on tails, right? The more I keep doing it, the more it just lands on either of them. Like it's random, because it's a 50-50 bet. But for these ones, 
for the patterns we're trading, we know like if I just keep on executing this pattern, six out of 10 times I'll be right, okay? And anytime I'm right, I'm making $2. Anytime I'm wrong, I'm losing a dollar. You get that calculation? Anytime you're right, you make $2. Anytime you're wrong, you lose a dollar. That's a bit technical, I'm sure most of you are getting lost. But that's basically the first thing you need to do. If, if you meet someone and he's a trader, always ask them, okay, what pattern do you trade and have you done research on it? If they don't have clear answers to those two questions, then just leave again. If you're into computers, I know there are computer nerds maybe in here. There are also people who use computers. You just write code, and if you write code, you use algorithms, so you can use machine learning, run them over 100 years of data. Uh, they'll give you statistical patterns that keep repeating in the market, and then you can now use the system, because it's now a system that has been backtested, has learned how to trade. So machine learning is basically the system learning how to make decisions in the market, and it will be making decisions for you in the market, okay? So that's the first thing you need to do. The second step you need to take is to understand risk management, okay? If you have a million dollars and you just keep on wasting it without thinking about the statistical edge and how you're going to manage risk, then there's a very, very high chance you lose all that money uh, despite the amount. Like, as much as it may look like a lot of money, a million dollars in the market is quite, quite little. We've seen people who've lost, like Bill Huang lost $22 billion. Yeah. So there's a guy who lost $22 billion in three days just because he didn't manage risk. Okay? So risk is the most important thing in the markets. How much risk do you have? And you always say, if you're playing a game with, uh, in the realm of risk, if you're playing a game that is in the realm of risk, there's odds. If there are no odds, there's no, that's risk. That's not risk taking, that's uncertainty. You're just guessing your things and eventually you'll blow everything. But if you have odds, you know I'll be right 55% of the time if I just keep executing this pattern and you're disciplined enough to do that, then you'll make money in the markets. And you'll make a lot of money in the markets. But if you don't have the discipline, or if you don't have the strategy, then you lose it all. So you need to develop a risk management philosophy. We always like saying, uh, the dead cannot be brought back to life. If you have a million dollars and you're trading and you lose it all, you cannot be brought back to life. But if you have a million dollars and you lose just 10% of that money, it, you can easily, easily recoup it. So you need to sit down, understand risk. Risk is quite, quite wide, all the way from position sizing. Position sizing is the amount you'll put on every trade. So will you risk 1% per trade, 2% per trade, 1.5, 0.5, uh, to draw down thresholds? How much are you willing to lose? You have a million dollars. I'm only willing to lose, let's say, 10% of that amount. So how much are you willing to lose also? You need to have those things clearly defined, your rules for risk. If you don't have them, you'll be the gambler. And risk is quite aligned to the objective you're trying to attain. For any investment, you have an objective. Probably you're trying to make 10%, 15%, 20%. So there's an objective that you're trying to attain. That will determine your risk profile and how you're going to uh, calibrate your, your, your risk. So the last thing that you need to do is to understand the psychology of humans. So what's the market? What is the market made up? It's made of us as people. The market is just me, you, all of us just trading. Only that we're making decisions at different times, we're betting on different things. Some of us have a long-term horizon, some of us have a short-term horizon, some of us have big capital, some of us have small capital, but the market is basically us trading against each other. Now, there's human nature. There are certain things which are very, very common among humans. For example, no one is immune to pain. No one at all is immune to pain. If you're not, if you're immune to pain, then you're sick. You're just not human enough. Uh, no one at all doesn't make emotional decisions, irrational decisions. Anyone who tries to say they don't, they are not humble enough to understand human nature. But if you understand human nature, you'll understand when people are brought into fear, they panic. When you give people uh, money, they get greedy. The certain things, when you take something from someone, when you burn someone, they become fearful. Those things apply in the market. And there are times when you'll see fear in the market, there are times when you'll see greed, there are times when you'll see euphoria, excitement. No one here is immune from making a million dollars and getting 
overly excited to the point of being euphoric. So you need to understand how markets work from that perspective. You need to observe yourself to see yourself getting into those places where you're becoming euphoric, getting into those places where you're becoming excited, uh, you're losing it, you're starting to make emotional decisions rather than rational decisions, you start thinking you're a god. Because if you make a million dollars in a very short period of time, it's very easy for you to conclude, you know, I'm the smartest guy in the room. But that's the wrong approach for the markets. In the markets, you must be humble enough to just follow your strategy despite the money you're making, despite the amount of money you're managing. So that's another place where you'll spend a lot of time trying to understand. And the basic idea understanding psychology of the market is to just understand two things. How do people make decisions when they're placed under uncertainty and risk? Just to, those two things are enough. If you understand how majority of the people will make decisions, if you, give, if, you, if you put them in an environment where there is risk and some uncertainty, then let's just do a sample, a small sample to just uh, show an example. So I'll give you guys, I'll give, I just want three people maybe who will volunteer to do for me this test. Or two, two people are enough. Just two, please. Anyone who will volunteer? Two people, a boy and a girl. Okay, that's one. For the ladies, for the ladies, one lady, okay, she'll do it. So, I'll play with you again. No, just stand, just stand, you'll answer my question. So I'm playing with you again, okay? And this game, there's a reward, but you'll also pay me if you lose, okay? So if you win, I'll pay you. If you lose, you'll pay me. So this is how the game works. There is setup A, there is game A. This is game one. So, so game one, there are two options. So, and the first game is, you don't play with me this game, and I'll give you $100. You just walk away, and you disappear with your $100. But no playing with me the game. The second option is, you'll play with me this game, but there's an 80% chance you will win, and a 20% chance you will lose. But if you play with me this game, if you win, I'll give you $200. If you lose, I'll give you nothing. Which option are you taking? B. Okay. And for the first one, uh, I'll play with you now another game. Now I'll reverse the game. It's still the same game, but now I'll reverse it. Okay? So, I won't play with you a game. You leave. That's option A. But if you leave, you're losing $100. So you'll give me $100. Okay? Now we'll play the game again. But if you lose, there's an 80% chance you lose a 20% chance you'll win. So, so if you lose, I'll take $200. What will you do? But there's a 20% chance you'll go home with your $200 or $100 intact. Because if I, if, if I don't, uh, if it doesn't land on my side, then you walk away with your money if it's on my side. So which one will you take? So you'll take the sure uh, loss of $100 and walk away. Okay. And for you, the two options, which one will you take? The first one and the second one? From the first question, which one will you take? If it's gaining $100, okay, let's, $100, uh, you gain $100 without playing with, with me any game, okay? If you play with me the game, there's an 80% chance you'll win and you'll gain $200. And the first, and the reverse question, you don't play with me the game, you lose $100. You play with me the game, there's a chance you lose 200 and nothing. So you lose $100. Why'd you guys go for those options? So you're going with this, and for this first one? So you're going with it? You're going to check the chance. And for you, the first one? Why do you do? Quite the same reason, okay. Most people, unfortunately, don't think like that, okay? So in the markets, the basic idea what I was trying to show you is, once someone is in a trade, and it's moving to their side, they normally are very, very quick to take their profits, okay? If you bought a share at 20 and it goes to 22, if it gets to 23, it now becomes anxiety. This money might go away. If it just makes the slight mistake of going back to 21.5, you're out of that market very, very fast to just secure that small gain. But on the flip side, once you're losing, you're in a losing position, you bought a share at 20, is at 18, 17, most people will speculate. They'll say, no, it will come back. It will go back to 15, it will come back. 
it will go back to 13 it will come back it will go back to 10 it will come back eventually you lose everything so if you understand just those two things like i was saying then you can be able to at least make some money in the markets that's one of the principles by the way of trading uh, cut your losses and ride your winners that's very very important to understand so finally so those are the three steps if you understand those three worlds you stand a chance finally so there are some myths and misconceptions about trading very very uh, often you'll hear people talking about trading being a uh, get rich quick uh, scheme so i started trading about six years ago and once i started the ideas i had of where i should be in three months or four months some of them are still not actualized up to today and it's been six years seven years so what i'm telling you if you think this is a get rich quick scheme if you if you if you see someone uh, and you think i'll start this thing and in three months four months i'll be living like him i'm very very sorry this is not the way this is not the light because if you think like that what normally happens is you get addicted to the market and there are people who are like that once you get addicted to the market you just keep losing and you just keep refilling your money because trading is very funny anyone who starts out in trading has a 50 50 chance of making money why because you can only buy or sell and it can only go up or down but once you start bringing those odds in the long run then anyone who doesn't understand this game gets kicked out after a year all those people are after a month first of all you remove the beginners after a year we remove the beginners who are not willing to put in the time after three years we remove everyone who's been putting in the time but they're not resilient enough after five years you're left with the people who will do it as a career so that's how we go filtering just like any other profession personally i believe all professions have filters all the way to the people who become extremely good at it so in trading don't approach trading thinking it's a get rich quick you can make money from signals what that basically means is you assume you can copy what i'm doing and make money without learning it so what you tell me is can anytime you're trading send me your signal or send me this and this often it doesn't work it it ends up ruining your pockets uh ruining your reputation with the other person so it's not something that you can do there are people who try and tell you once you've started trading i'll send you signals i'll tell you when to buy when to sell and how much to risk don't believe them because i may tell you right now i'm doing this and in a flash of a second i've changed my mind changed my position and rotated everything i may not communicate that to you and you may end up not uh, being in a very very good place so this one has been tried for years and no one has made money out of it and the other one is brokers bet against the heart like <laughs> brokers take positions against you so bro most brokerage firms actually don't make money from trading they don't make money from you losing money they make money from processing your transaction because once you start trading just before you start making money there's a transaction cost for every position that you're taking that's how the broker makes his money he doesn't make money from uh, trying to game against you because most people who say that if you look at the chart for the market often it's moved where they didn't want it to move so it's not really that the, the broker bet against them it's just they are not making are very very smart decisions because if brokers are betting against people then only brokers will make money but you have seen very many retailers make money consistently out of the market so you cannot tell me that they just decide to attack you as a person and 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 just bet against you this is a fallacy that many people bend to to try and escape the responsibility or try and learn a, uh, run away from learning how to trade itself so the other one is forex is gambling forex is not gambling i can assure you that a hundred percent but you can gamble in the market okay that's the paradox forex is not gambling but you can gamble in it you can be in the market and you're gambling how do you know someone is a gambler they're in the market and they don't know which pattern they are looking for that's a gambler in the market and they don't have a risk management strategy that's a gambler so if you see certain things then you're just basically gambling in the market but forex in itself is not gambling if you follow the right steps if you look for the right edges if you be disciplined enough to execute those edges then you can consistently make money from the markets uh, the last one is forex is a scam uh, that one is it can be some people have made it a scam some people have used it to scam people for example the people have told you who say i'll give you a hundred percent return if you do this and this i'll do this and this often uh there are people who are doing it 
in the right way and there are people who are doing it in the wrong way. That's a mix of people because you have banks which are trading for people, you have banks now getting into trading and you have the scammers. Now people who are alleging that they can double your money in, in an instant or they can quadruple your money, certain things just don't work in the market. So don't fall prey to some of these things. And finally, I look at some of the common mistakes that traders make. I personally have made these mistakes uh, and I've learned from them. But I think if you're starting out or if you're looking for a career in this world, these are the things you should watch out for. One, ensure you have a strategy. Don't make decisions randomly. Don't do that. If you do that, you lose money. Ensure you have a strategy and a plan. A bad plan is better than no plan. Ensure you have a plan. Ensure you have a risk management framework. If you don't manage your risk, eventually you're going to blow up. Be disciplined. It's the only secret. This is like athletics. It's a performance field. You only eat what you kill. If you're not disciplined in certain fields, there's no way you stand a chance. So you need to be very, very disciplined if you're approaching trading. Finally, don't make decisions emotionally. Use your system. Let the system make decisions. For you, it's to follow. Your job is to just follow until you become proficient enough to be intuitive about how your system is working. But before that, ensure you just follow it. And then finally, avoid always pressing that button. This is not a day job. 90% of your profits will come from 10% of your opportunities that will exist in the market. So if you're looking into this and you're trying to think every month I'll be making $100 or every day I'll be making, like there are people who come to the office, I want to be making $100 every day. And you just tell them that's not possible. This is not a job. You're not paid uh, like you think. What normally happens is there are periods where we have a lot of opportunity, opportunities and then there are periods where the market just dries up. You get Because, for example, when Russia and Ukraine started fighting, there are very many good opportunities. But now the markets no longer care about that. So there's no opportunity there to be made. There's no money to be made from that. When COVID came, there are very many good opportunities. And I'm not trying to say that opportunities come in when you have crisis or when other people are suffering. No, opportunities also come in when things are going very, very well. Uh, for example, when COVID came, we had a lot of free money being given out to people and stocks have done extremely well over the last two years from about 2020 April to recently when they have started sliding down again because we are speculating that things probably are not going to be so well, probably six, ten, ten months down the line. So basically the markets, it's just about that and I think I've done my job in explaining what uh, trading is all about, not really, but I've given you a nutshell on what you really need to tackle for you to become good at trading. I'll introduce my colleague to clear up. Uh, my name is Tara Slawi. I'm a co-founder here at Financial Hub uh, and the risk manager also. So as Ken has said, trading is all about risk uh, and you need someone to at least uh, watch on how much you're, pos uh, you're taking uh, risks in the market. So that's my main role at Financial Hub, uh, running the company and uh, risk management. But today I'm here to talk about our products, Basically, uh, what we do at Financial Lab Forex Academy, because you have seen, we majorly focus on training our own personal funds, and now uh, 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 trading our own personal funds and training people on how to trade. So basically, even before we, we opened Financial Hub, we, we used to uh, trade me, Ken, and Caleb uh, in their house. They had an apartment, a two-bedroom apartment, and I used to come in, and we always just used to spend the whole day, even sometimes the whole night, just uh, reading, reading books, uh, watching YouTube videos, sharing ideas, sharing... Uh, things that people are learning. Maybe Ken learns something, he'll share it with me. Caleb learns something, he'll share it with us. And that is basically what we were doing, we were, uh, just the three of us. We actually had two other people, two other friends who were there, but they left. Uh, they didn't manage to get to where we are uh, in the point of the company. But majorly what we were doing at that time, uh, we had a lot of friends now from campus. They were actually telling us, what is, this guys, uh, what is this thing you guys are doing? You guys quit school, you're only just in the house. And we, they, they were asking if, if we can at least maybe create a blog somewhere or even uh, just uh, some short videos on how maybe they can learn how to trade. So that time we decided to at least uh, start our website first. So we started our website first back in 2019, I think. And we also had a, a, free, a free book. So the book actually at first was not meant to be, to be sold. It was just a, a, a book we would give to our friends. It was, uh, we had an e-book and we also had a physical copy that, 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 that we just give to friends and, uh, and family who wanted to learn how to trade. But as the demand came more, the more people wanted to learn how to trade, we decided not to do it in a shoddy way because our friends would come to our house because they are our friends. We are, 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 are we could allow that. 
But go to a point uh, now in 2019, when we decided to reach the company, we decided to, to do it a bit more professionally. So we decided to, uh, from the knowledge we, have, we had gathered, because we attended for about three, three years, uh, learning and now uh, starting, starting how to trade are uh, now seriously with, uh, with risk management. Because when we started out, as Ken told you, we had a $300, we pushed it to $1,200 in two weeks. And in the third week, we lost everything. So, but we knew there's the potential in this business because moving money from $300 to $1,200 in two weeks and you're a total beginner, basically that was beginner's luck. But we saw there's uh, potential in this uh, business. So that is when we, uh, we decided to do it professionally. We decided now to sit down with Ken and Caleb. Uh, the book we had at first, we restructured it. And right now it's our free ebook. So it's still a free, uh, a free book. So if you go to our website, you'll find a free ebook. I'll show you, I'll show you that, uh, this one. So this is, a, this is a free ebook, the one which you started with. But now we decided to sit down and now write a deep book on uh, basically everything that you need to understand about trading, the major pillars as Ken has, has told you. Idea generation, risk management, and psychology of trading. So we decided to detail that, all that uh, in the book. And it was basically all from uh, the, the experience we had from our research, from our sharing ideas, we, uh, watching a lot of uh, YouTube videos, reading a lot of books, if you go to Ken's house, he has a whole big library of books. So we read, uh, we used to read a lot. Despite us being dropouts, we decided to, to, to just read a lot and actually tell my, my, my parents, I think I read, I read more than people who actually even in school. And now from that, from the research we had, now we decided to write, to write this book. So this book is free, but this book uh, is, uh, is a paid one. So it goes for 1500 but currently we are, we are having an insta sell still going for 1200 uh, that was now uh, the first part of where, where we started this book so this is the book that actually led to us starting financial hub because pe people demanded that they wanted uh, something they could uh, they could start out at that time also there were no uh, basically there was no place you could go in uh, here in nairobi to learn how to trade so we are just me, Ken, and Caleb. All our friends don't know anyone else to go. Even us, we didn't know where to learn trading. We just read books from the library and uh, research. So that, at that time, there were actually, as, as Caleb said, there were no regulations. So even brokers are not here. So brokers are not here. Educators are not here. Even the the few, the few traders who are here were very very low key because now maybe them they started way way earlier back in 2005, 2006, and they were not even willing to share anything with, uh, with people. And from that point now is when we decided now to to. Uh, from the uh, from the book, we decided to make a website. Uh, first, uh, first uh, this is the, this is actually I think the third version of the website. And uh, from there, we decided now to post articles. So it was just purely articles. So in the morning, I wake up. Maybe I'm watching Pound USD. I write just my own hypothesis, not not financial advice. I'm not recommending any buy or sell, but I just used to write. Maybe I think Pound USD will will go to this level because of this and this and this. Uh, and uh, people used to engage with the articles. They did very very very, very well. I can see. I think even uh, from here, you can see we still have more articles, like uh, an article from yesterday, how to improve your decision making. That was, I think, done by one of our teammates there. Mastering the skill of forex trading. So until right now, we still do the articles. So we we we, uh, we never stopped doing what we were doing before. We are still doing the articles very very actively. Uh, today morning, I can see. Uh, I think this is uh, my friend Kiniti. He wrote pound pound yen cools down after 165. Uh, after topping at uh, 168.4. So we always do these articles. If you come to our website, financialhubfx.com, uh, you'll always find the articles. So we, they are posted daily, I think more than five articles per day, basically on fundamentals, which is now the market news and uh, on technical analysis. And also the psychology part of trading is, is uh, actively posted in the articles. So we always like to still share a lot of free content. For, personally, I believe you can learn trading without paying a cent to anyone but it will take you some, some sort of, a uh, lot of due diligence on your own. It will take you maybe longer, because maybe if you just come to, to my class, maybe on risk management, because I'm the one who handles risk management in our courses, maybe I can just tell you, if you manage your risk like this and this and this and this and this, maybe you have a chance of not blowing your account. But if you, if you do this and this and this and this, the chance of you blowing your account are very, very high. So uh, just like, I, I, I always say, you can't copy experience, but you can try and cheat it. So by just me sharing, <coughs> an idea or two about risk management, it really, really helps you avoid some mistakes that we did. Basically, you don't need to repeat all the mistakes we did uh, in your trading journey. So after the website now, we decided now to, to do uh, YouTube videos. 
you should go to our YouTube. We have very, very old videos uh, in, in, Ken's, uh, in, Ken's, uh, in Ken's and Caleb's houses that we started way, way back in 2019, I think. So we just used to do also free technical analysis. So these are free, all these are free things. We don't charge anything for them. So every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10.30, we go live on Zoom and we share our ideas basically on how markets are, on, on where we think markets will go for the day, for the week. On Wednesday, we'll recap the week and on Friday, we'll have a lesson, maybe on risk management, psychology, how to improve discipline, how to avoid uh, loss traps and such stuff. Then um, slowly and slowly, now after the, the website is done, the, the, the YouTube is done and we are still trying to just create content for free, everything that at that time was free. We then decided to, because now the, the demand for doing trading professionally now was coming in, not just from our friends, but even people we didn't know. So there was no way me I'd bring someone I don't know to my house to teach them Forex. So we decided, okay, why don't we take an office and uh, start teaching people professionally how to trade? So that is when in 2020, we decided to, to uh, move into JQuart Towers. We are at JQuart Towers 17th floor. And we moved into JQuart Towers, I think, just as COVID was hitting. That, that of February 2020, and COVID really hit, I think, around March, well. So we came into the office, and the next month, business is down, because everyone is, is not moving money, everyone is at home, you can't even have clients coming into the office. Basically, we just used to go to the office, me, Ken, and Caleb, and we just trade. The, the teaching part was almost dead, so we, we, we'd also have to uh, uh, see on how maybe we can, we can uh, come back to, to, to teaching people how to trade, but it was very, very difficult. So that is when actually we decided, we decided to do the, uh, the Zoom sessions because guys were at home, now they could easily join for the Zoom sessions for free still. And for the few people who could come to the office, we used to at least also have some classes going on. That is 2020, and I think until right now, we've taught, I think, over 250 students uh, uh, cumulatively since those who started from the house and until right now, guys who are, uh, who are being taught at our, at our trading floor. So uh, when our YouTube was growing, of course, things, things change. So at first, we were only doing uh, technical breakdowns. So in 2021, I think we decided to come up with a podcast. Someone asked about the podcast. And we have our podcast uh, here. It's called The Traders Show. I don't know if any one of you has heard it before, The Traders Show. Anyone? You've heard it? OK, nice. You heard it too? OK, so the, the traders show, basically, we always talk about not just trading, but OK, it's heavily trading, but we try and also bring some other aspects of investments. Uh, business, people, uh, business people are doing things like NFTs is, is, is hot right now. Cryptos are hot. So we try and also bring some industry experts from cryptos, because as you can see us, we, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are deeply into Forex, but we're also planning on maybe how we can also uh, come uh, into cryptos. But we always like to bring other people who are in other I industries. So we have, I, I think, some topics on cryptos, businesses, NFTs. We have another one on uh, stock markets, the local stock markets here in Kenya, how you can invest in NSE and stuff. So uh, yeah, that one, I think, it's for NSE. So on the podcast, um, it became a success, a success very, very fast, getting very, very uh, good views, good, uh, good, good feedback from people. And that is when now, as you can see, there's a brand who came in, Pepperstone came in, and now they decided to sponsor our podcast because they saw these boys are doing a good job in trying to educate people in trading the right way. We are not promoting any, any shoddy things in trading like signals and uh, managing, people for peop uh, managing money for people when you're not licensed still. So that is when now Pepperstone came in. They are, they are a regulated broker. Uh, I think the, the, the best broker I can, I can recommend, not just because they're sponsoring us, even before they sponsored, that, they sponsored us, that is what we used to, that's the broker we used to, to, to use. And um, we also had a, a, a program back in the days that, okay, not back in the days, like uh, 2020, 2021, uh, that we paused, but uh, it, was, it was sort of, we, we were trying the, the, the prop farm concept with another partner, but it, the, the success rate was very, very low. Basically, no trader was, uh, showing success in, in the markets. Uh, consistency, basically, not, not even success, consistency. And that one, we put it aside. Uh, apart from my YouTube channel, I think I can go now deep into our website. Yeah, and uh, yeah, as you can see, we, uh, here it, it was, it's written, we train, fund, and mentor traders. So this fund right now, it's not there, because we are, we are, are, are used to have it, but uh, we paused it a bit. Not that it's not there, but we paused it to restructure it better to at least suit uh, uh, our younger traders. Uh, 
So as you can see, we have courses, we have a community, and we have free induction. So these are the three main things we have. Um, our community is on Discord, so I think most, most of you guys are on Discord. If not, you can join Discord. I'll go deep into the courses. The funding program, as I said, is not there. And the free induction. So the free induction basically is um, you don't need to come and you don't know anything about trading and you just pay for a course. So we always give someone the first class is always free. So you'll have, you can come to our offices. Uh, Kiniti will take you through our, uh, how, how, how trading works, what you need to do, the amount of capital you need to start with. Because most people come into trading very, very green. They think they learn a course today. After they're done with the course, they will now start minting money from the markets. And most times it doesn't work like that. So uh, on our courses, we have a beginner course. So this is a purely online course. It's a uh, $100 basically. Don't use, okay, just use a $100 rate for, for, for the Kenya shillings, which comes to about 10,000 shillings. So this is uh, for a total beginner who, uh, who wants to at least start trading on their own or learn something on their own before they come into an in-person class. So you want to first get the, because it's purely online. There's no interaction with the tutors. So uh, you get it, you learn on your own. Very, very, very good interactive videos uh, on how to, 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 to break down markets, risk management, psychology of trading, uh, back testing, how to journal your trades, uh, yeah. We also have, apart from that, we also have videos, uh, uh, sorry, articles also. On the, on, the, on, the, on the portal, we have a school portal where you get articles, quizzes, book recommendations. I saw someone asking book recommendations. So on idea generations, you'll get book recommendations for that. On risk management, I'll detail the books on risk management, on psychology, the best books on psychology. Then uh, we have an intermediate package. So these other two are uh, one-on-one -on -one classes. So basically, you can either choose to have it through Zoom, or you can come to our trading flow. So they are one-on-one -on -one classes. Uh, this one will runs for one month. Another one runs for two months. So this one is for someone who is not so, total, so new into trading. You have some background in trading, but you're struggling with maybe risk management. You're struggling with uh, managing your psychology. Maybe greed is overwhelming you. And now we just try and fine tune your, your strategy. The other one is for someone who is totally new, doesn't know a peep. Who doesn't know a peep here? Peep or a candlestick. If you don't know those two things, that is the course for you because you are totally new into trading. You need to spend more time to at least uh, sharpen you uh, the basics than sharpen the, 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 the technical stuff. So it takes longer. Uh, it, there's more hours with the tutors. And it also comes with a book. So we also have a book. These other two courses don't come with a book. But the other one comes with a book because we believe the book is essential for someone who's starting out uh, to trade. So we always give them a book. And um, as you can see, the price is $100, $200, $400. But right now, we have a 15% sale on all our products. So if you calculate that, that's about, this comes to about 8,500. That comes to about 17,000. And that comes to about 34,000. So those are our paid, uh, our paid, uh, programs, so we, 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 as I said, we have so many free, free things. But if you feel like from the free stuff, these guys are doing a good job, I think I, they can train me more, you can now choose to uh, get the, 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 the paid programs. So here are our latest articles. So every day, every day when you come to the website, you can get an, uh, an insight into what is happening in the financial markets. So you can get to understand this is fundamentally what is happening. This is the Fed chairman of the United, uh, the Fed, United, the, the central, central bank governor of the United States called uh, Powell. You can see this is fundamental, that is technical, that is also crypto on Binance. So you can also learn a lot about crypto articles. We write articles on cryptos, but we don't teach cryptos right now, but we write articles on them so that at least people can, can get our info in one place. Um, so we also have a Discord channel, as I said. You can join our Discord channel through our YouTube. Uh, Apart from that also, this is where you can contact us. So as I've said, we are at Jacob Towers 17th floor, uh, office 1723. Uh, you can also book, I can also always uh, book our a session with us. So if you go down, Caleb, you can always schedule a, uh, schedule a session with us, a 15 minute schedule a meeting, whereby uh, one of us will take you through what you need to know to understand trading, the basics you need to have in trading, uh, how the journey can be. Uh, basically, just give you an, an overview of how the, 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 the career is. Because most people come into trading, as Ken said, they are totally, they know trading from a totally different perspective of how uh, they shouldn't be knowing it like that. So you can always schedule your, your meeting, we will get that prompt, uh, then we will uh, have that meeting with you. If you don't, want, a, if you don't want, an, want an online meeting, you can walk into our offices and we will accommodate you, uh, give you some time to understand your struggle, st struggles, the level where you are in trading, and basically how we, uh, how we can help each other. 
apart from that also we've we've managed to to apart from our products we've managed to uh, run some internship programs so we had an internship program last year from november i think from november and it was very very successful we maybe we are planning to get another round of interns uh, if there are people here first year second years third years those guys who want internship programs in the financial markets financial industries you can uh, come to, to to our company and we we will, we will easily give you an insight into uh, the insider's view of the financial markets. So basically that is what we always uh, try to teach. Not so, like not so, we always tell people the most of the work is on your side. If you want to, to, to become a trader, these basics you can learn them in, you've seen the, the beginner course is two months. So you can easily learn these basics in two months. But for you now to develop that consistency, for you to develop that uh, resilience, for you to understand how markets work really, really, and how they work for you. Because markets work differently for, uh, for different people. Some people are long-term traders, some people are very, very short-term <coughs> traders. As you say, there are the traders who they hold trades for not more than a day. There are people like Caleb who can hold a trade for one month. So people are very, very different in, uh, in the markets. And it takes time for you to develop that. So what I can say is learning how to trade, the basics of how to trade is easy, but now becoming a good trader is now the hardest part in trading. It will take time. If you, if, if you don't become resilient, I think when we're starting out to trade, I had a couple of friends, even those people who we taught how to trade back, uh, back from our rooms, until right now, I, I think very few of them end up taking the career because the challenges you get in trading is very, very, e it's very, very easy for you to just quit and go into a nine to five job where you know there's security. Because in trading, uh, markets, sorry, markets don't prom promise us anything. You wake up in the morning and you don't know if that day you're going to lose or win, but you, you know you will follow your plan and if your plan works, you will win. If your plan doesn't work, you will lose a certain uh, level of money that you have managed to, 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 to uh, to, to, you've planned to lose already. So we always say, don't trade what you can't lose. If you're, planning, if, you're, if you're planning to start out to trade, don't trade with your school fees, don't trade with your rent money, always trade with money we are willing to lose. So most, uh, most of us, we, we trade with, with money we couldn't afford to lose back then, and we got into, like, you've used your rent, so you don't know where you'll get your rent next time. So always, always, always focus on, uh, trading uh, money you're willing to lose. And if you get a good risk management plan, most likely you won't lose everything. But it will take you time for you to convert that curve from losing to winning. But the moment you start winning, it becomes an exponential curve. And uh, the reward is very, very uh, big. Even for us, we're not there where we want to be yet. Our goal is to even create a billion dollar company in terms of trading, manage. Uh, maybe in the next few few years, we can now pursue the license because you can't trade people's money without a license. So that is why we can't take a coin from you guys and say we will give you this return. But in a few years, maybe we'll pursue that side of the of the business. It's actually a more promising side of the business because uh, I always say the money you can make in trading is is money literally you can't make any other anywhere else. So trading is a place where, by me personally, I've seen. Uh, my, uh, some of my friends who have traded for long, they are very, very successful, uh, managing very, very big money. And uh, also from reading books, as Ken has, has told you, I think you had someone lost $22 billion. So how much do you think that person had? So uh, losing $22 billion, this is someone managing, even in Kenya, there's no one with that amount of money. So, uh, and it shows you, if you choose this as a career, become patient, form a 10-year plan, I think it will work for you. But if you don't want to form a five-year, 10-year plan, most likely you will quit a, a, a somewhere along the way and the trading will just not work for you. And you will go out there saying that business is not a good business. So I think that that's the main challenge about trading. Like most people have failed in trading than those people who have succeeded in trading. And that is why they end up uh, saying trading is not a good business. You can't make it, uh, you can't be consistent in trading and uh, become successful for, uh, in the long term. And I think that is, uh, as Ken was saying, it's a myth or a misconception. It's not very, very true. Because most people who have done it the right way, guys who have been patient enough to uh, follow the process, forget about the money first. Cause I, I, I always say that, forget about the money, focus on the process, and the money will follow. So, but most of us, we come into trading, we want to go for the money. The process will come later, but we, we are doing it the reverse way. And that is the main challenge about why trading has a very, very low success rate. That's not a lie. Trading has a very, very low success rate. Like very few people make money in trading in the long run. So that is one of the main challenges that we have. We mainly focus on the money. We forget about the education. We forget about um, learning how to trade in a slow pace. Guys want to finish the course, deposit money immediately and start making money. It doesn't work like that. You first finish the course, 
go back and back test. Basically, back testing is testing what you've learned. If it works, first of all, if it works from 2010 to 2020, there's a high likelihood it will work the they are moving forward. But for us, we don't want to do that backlog. And that is the, 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 the heavy work about trading. Heavy work in trading is on the research, the back testing. Executing is easy, because I just choose buy or sell. That is easy. Put my stop loss, put my tech profit, close my laptop. But the research of before I put that trade, the research I did, the, 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 the method I used to trade is now what makes trading uh, very, very difficult for most people, because we don't want to follow the process, we want to follow the money. And if you follow the money, I can assure you, you will not make any sent in trading. For us, it goes, it, I, 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 I'd go to a point where by, we even forgot about the money. We just wanted to become consistent traders. If you are trading a certain pattern, you just want to trade that pattern consistently. Nothing, no, uh, no, uh, uh, nothing else. So, and that is now where we say uh, our system now started becoming at least a positive system. But before that, when you are focused on the money, you want to make rent for the office, you want to make rent for your house, it just becomes a very, very difficult task. You had $1,000, you wanted to make $300 for your rent, you risk so much, you lose even the $300 you had. So you, you're now back in debt, you can't pay your rent, it was just very, very difficult. But the moment you plan your life outside, like let's say for the next three months I'm okay, and I'm just planning to trade consistently, to follow my system consistently, that is when I, at least things can start uh, making sense in trading. Apart from that, I think uh, all, that's all we offer. I'm not sure I forgot any, anything. Uh, we have said about the free induction, so if you want to at least come to our offices, get inducted into how we do things, how the course modules are, I think Caleb can go to the course modules. Okay. Yeah, so now our legendary course, this is the two month uh, class, you can see module one is general, general introduction to trading, then there's fundamental analysis part one, fundamental analysis part two, there's technical analysis, uh, how, how the forex market works, then this is strategies now. From here, it's strategies. This is my strategy. I call it value area trading. Basically, I trade value areas. Uh, this is Caleb's strategy. It's called market structure. He looks at structure a lot. Um, Ken's, uh, Ken's strategy is called all weather or trend following, or whichever you choose. So uh, he, that is Ken's strategy. So, so you can see there are three strategies. Then uh, after that, there's top-down approach. For those people who have traded a bit, they know top-down approach. Basically, that is breaking down markets from a higher time frame to a lower time frame. Then Caleb will do a very, very good job on uh, helping you know how to create a trading plan or a journal. So I always say, if you don't journal your trades, they know, there's no way you can remember your last 100 trades on top of your mind. So you always need to journal every trade you take. So you take this trade, you journal it, uh, why you got into that trade, how much you lost, how much you won, why you lost it, um, uh, why you, you won on a, on a certain trade. Then we'll come into risk management, as, as Ken was saying, a very, very important aspect of trading. Risk management is, is very important, so you have two classes on risk management. I'll teach you the different kinds of risks, uh, risk management framework, managing drawdowns, and all that. So then finally, and uh, not even finally, then the psychology of trading, also very, very important. Uh, psychology of trading, uh, part one, psychology of trading, part two. This Ken does it, he's very, very good in psychology of trading. He reads a lot of uh, neuroscience books, and uh, he's very, very good in psychology. Then uh, me and Caleb, we finish up on system development. So now that is back testing, forward testing, and uh, creating a positive system. So that is uh, what we, we finish up with. Then finally is live trading, part one, part two. So we sit down with you and we try and execute positions in the market when we get them. And uh, basically from there, we believe now, if you go and practice all, 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 all that we've taught, you are at a better chance to start trading on the right foot. Not, not that you will become a successful trader, but you have a, a ghost of a chance, that is the word, a ghost of a chance of becoming a successful trader, or even not even a successful trader at, at, at the start, but at least you can see your journey becoming easier, you can know where to start, which strategy to use, because most of the time you find, if you go to the, to the, to the internet, there are almost a million strategies. Almost every trader trades differently. And now it's, it's very difficult for you to filter out which strategy is good for me, which strategy works for me. And you also say if you have your own strategy, you don't have to, to, to twist it. The most important thing in trading is risk management and how you handle your psychology. So those two things are what we focus on uh, mostly, trying to make people understand that idea generation is good, yes, but it's not very, very important as risk management and how you handle yourself when you're in trades. Uh, I think I can stop there. Uh, I think I've done uh, my job in explaining the products, where we are at, and uh, as I've said, we have an Easter cell. Uh, yeah, I think I've explained everything I was to explain. Uh, okay, finally, not even finally, we have the free school. 
So we have the free school, I think Khaled, we can go there. So also we have some, some basic intro into basically how our course looks like. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's about eight topics that uh, Caleb covers on, on basics. So what is, what is PIP value? What are PIPs? So you can watch them on YouTube. They are on YouTube. Market orders, Forex terminologies, who controls the Forex market, what are, forex, uh, what are currencies, and finally, what is Forex? So these videos are very, very uh, basic videos, but they'll help you understand where you can start, the basics, the basics of where to start out. And after you've watched this, maybe you can say now, let me uh, look at what their deeper course entails, and maybe if I can choose to take it or not. But I always say, as I've said, in trading, the most work is on your side. Us is just to give you sort of a, a, a roadmap, then it's for you now to choose how fast you will go, how slow you will go, the amount of hours you put into your trading, and all that. So if you don't put hours into your trading, of course, if it was to take you five years, it will now take you 10 years. But if you do it, if you spend more 80 hours, it will now take you two and a half years. And I always say, it's, as, as Ken was saying, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So just make sure you are you're patient, you know what you're looking for in the markets, you're not chasing the money, you want to be a disciplined trader, consistent trader. And for that, I think you can easily, easily become, uh, make it a career now. But if you do it the opposite way, you are chasing the money, there's no way it can, it can become a career. Also, as Ken said, uh, those people who, who are doing it full time have a better chance of becoming uh, successful traders in the, in the forex market. But if you're trying to juggle between two, three, four things, uh, it will be very, very difficult for you to be a good trader. So I think I can stop there. If, if someone else also has any questions for me in terms of the products and uh, the pricings maybe, uh, how to uh, book the sessions, you can ask. And I think I'll stop there if there are no questions. Questions on products? I think I can sit Ian. I think I can call Ian to, okay, yes? Uh, uh, thank you, thank you so much for that. Uh, for me, uh, just to appreciate you on, uh, on the information. Maybe thank you. Maybe just talk about the brokers, uh, maybe who are the people in the market. Okay. So, in Kenya, I think. Uh, and, hmm? and another question, how about you have a financial manager? The risk manager, yeah. Mm -hmm. How much lot size should they, should they lot size. So that's a bit technical also. It's very difficult for me. There's, there's a formula I have, a very simple formula, and as a, I can write it for you here, but it's like you, you, you can't have a fixed lot size. Lot size depends on basically the amount, the amount of PIP to your stop loss and how much you want to risk. So you have $500. How much do you want to risk on a trade? 1%, 2%, 10%? Okay, I'll write the formula here, but how much do you want to risk? Uh, just 3%. 3%? Okay, 3%, that is about $15 or $500, right? So, the formula for position sizing or lot size. Yeah. So first, I've asked you how much are you willing to risk? So you said 3%, that is $15. So the formula goes by you have to have two things. The amount of money you want to risk and how many pips from your entry to your stop loss. So how many pips? Let's say you're taking a trade with a stop loss of let's say 30 pips, or even let's say 20 pips. So you need to have those two parameters. Amount at risk, and your pips to stop loss. So when you have these two things, now you can now calculate your lot size. So you have $500, that is the amount of capital. And uh, risk is 3%, so that is $15. And pips to stop loss is 20 pips. So we have a formula, lot size is equals to amount at risk Divide by your pips to stop loss. So that is pips to stop loss. All this times 0 0.1. So for, the, for this, it will be $15. Divide by 20 times 0 0.1. Quick math. What is your load size? Hey, guys from finance. <laughs> 
15 divided by 20, I think this comes to about, hmm? Zero point zero seven five. See, so that is the loss size you'll have. So you see, it, it, it can't be consistent because every time maybe you're changing the amount of risk, or on the next trade your stop loss different. Your stop loss is different. You see, so you always have to use this formula, and for every trade you take, you have to calculate the loss size. So you just, you just can't say with five hundred dollars I'll be using zero point zero one. It it, it uh, changes because if you have a bigger stop loss, you'll find that you're using a very very smaller uh, 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 loss size. So that this is the basic formula. If you, you can come and maybe take it off or if you, uh, 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 write it down somewhere. So any other question? Your second question, or oh, brokers. Okay, on brokers, we have a couple of brokers. Brokers, I think the first broker was regulated in 2018. 2018 is when the first one came. Uh, EGM, I think they were here some days. I, I saw them, they were here, I think last year. Yeah, FX Pesa, EGM, so that is one of the brokers. The scope market, there is now a paper stone who we use. Uh, there's hot forex, the, the, the regulated ones. There's hot forex. There's uh, Xfinity. Uh, I think which one else, Caleb? Yeah, there, there are about six or seven brokers regulated. But for us, as we told you, we work with Pepperstone. Uh, they have very, very good customer service. You can walk into the office at Westlands anytime. Uh, account opening is is fast. They have Mpesa with withdrawal, Mpesa deposits. Uh, Tight spreads on, on, on they have a, an account called the Reza account, which has, which has very, very tight spreads. On things, on things like gold, they actually have zero spreads on gold. Uh, and I think, yeah, Paperstone is one of the best. Okay, the other ones are also not, okay, not so bad, but Paperstone is one of the best, according to my own personal experience trading with them. And uh, that is basically uh, what we try and do. We help that. Uh, our traders to at least start trading from a good standpoint because I hate listening to someone coming into the office saying, there's a friend of mine actually who came to the office, I think it was not less than a month ago, and he told me he lost 14 million shillings in the markets and he didn't even know what is a peep. He was, he was trading with signals. See, so putting 14 million shillings and you're trading with signals, for me, doesn't sit right with me because maybe just use $400, understand how markets work, develop your own strategy and now start trading your 14 million. Then depending on someone else to give you signals to trade such a huge amount and one or two things happened and the money was gone. You see, so wrong position sizing, wrong lot size, not using your stop losses can easily, easily make you lose even hundred million dollars in the markets in a flash of a second. So markets are not our parents, they don't, they have no emotions, they just move. So the fact that if you don't manage yourself, it's so easy for you to lose even a fortune. As Ken has said, Livermore, one of the greatest traders in the world, killed himself just because he couldn't withstand the pain of losing over hundred million dollars back in the 1930s. So that man saw that this business is too difficult and he wrote a letter to the wife and said, me, I'm gone. See, so it's not, uh, you just focus on the education side of it, learn slowly, be patient, don't chase the money, and if you learn well, of course, the money will follow. If you practice well, the money will follow. If you become resilient, the money will follow. But if you quit on the first month of losing your first account, and you say trading is a scam, I've lost money, the broker was not with me, and you quit, that, there's no way you'll become a, you'll form a career in trading. So I think I can stop there, I can call Ian to finalize, then uh, we can have an interaction se uh, session. Okay, so generally first, I'd like to thank the Financial Hub Academy. I think it's for the first time we build confidence in most of us, and being honest, most of us have been victims of scammers. Like, I'll, give, I'll share an experience, one of the experiences. Early last year, I wish you would just come earlier than you did. Mm -hmm. Some of us were introduced to some guys, they told us, hey, we are pros in this thing, so as as Waishimiwa say we have some money, let's give give them that money, trade for us, then give us 5% each month for a period of 12 months. And they told us in case anything goes here, ah, we'll just give you a principal and we'll call it off. Okay, three months down the line, yes, it was a success, they were giving us money. When we are looking forward even to own this school, we had lots of dreams. <laughs> even I was thinking of even living I can not care for a hostel. I just secure an apartment just here, but whoo, 
Three months later, Hebrew are calling. I don't know how we believe people even without offices. I don't know how we sign contracts like on the phone and just send them and we move. What? We lost a big chunk of money and a number are here. I've just seen them walking in. But finally, at least have a chance to put or give a chance for it into my career portfolio. And I think I'll be your first client. I know nothing about Forex. And let me give Mark. Tuesday I'll be walking into offices. At least I want to try it out. I've learned. I can't say I've learned. Yes, I've learned. But I've learned also True. the hardest way. And I believe most of you have also been your some experiences. Maybe some of you have made it. Maybe you're owning apartments, even almost buying everything around this place but it's nice and we appreciate the compost delivery and you taking time and believing in this thing and I believe most of you will be the first also customers. Is it right? Yes. So with that I would also like to thank Strathmore for allowing them to come and also enlighten us and at least sharpen what we had and the information we had before. Also, the, I wouldn't forget the Sufesa Club who also made this possible. I would also like to appreciate you, uh, Mwale, the chairperson, I believe. And finally, appreciate you all for making time and making to this event. Otherwise, have a nice weekend and have a blessed day.